You are skeptical of the contents of those emails. Well, Byron asks us to focus on the real story, but it's not entirely clear what the real story is with this email. There's plenty of reason to be skeptical about it. First of all, it has the fingerprints of Rudy Giuliani and Steve Bannon, both of whom have been involved in pushing conspiracy theories in the past, both of whom have legal troubles now and declining credibility. Second of all, apparently this uh, email came to be known because of a shopkeeper who says Hunter Biden dropped off his computers, but he's legally blind and couldn't be sure it was Hunter Biden. He gave an interview in which he contradicted himself many times, and he refused to disclose the nature of his relationship with Giuliani. Furthermore, the Biden campaign has denied that any such meeting take place, took place. Hunter Biden has denied through his lawyer that any such meeting took place. Journalists need to be careful until we have some actual authenticity to this email. There's no metadata on the email that the New York Post published in a picture, and there's no header on it, and there's plenty of reason to doubt it. Journalists by, like Byron York could have been caught up in a Russian disinformation campaign if they're claiming that this email is accurate without having the facts. Let's turn our attention to another uh, story underway right now. Ben Sass, Republican senator from Nebraska, uh, with a withering assessment of the president in a phone, a phone call to constituents. I want to play part of that for you right now. I'm now looking at the possibility of a, of a Republican bloodbath in the Senate, and that's why I've never been on the Trump train. It's why I didn't um, agree to serve on his reelection committee, and it's why I'm not campaigning for him. Byron, what do you make of that kind of assessment from the senator from Nebraska? Well, look, there, there are a number of people, uh, Republicans, who believe Trump is going to lose. Some of them want to abandon ship uh, ahead of that time. Uh, ben Sass has always had kind of a problematic relationship with the whole Trump phenomenon, although he did vote with the president most of the time. He voted to acquit the president and keep him in office in the impeachment uh, trial. So I think a lot of members of the Republican uh, base would say to Senator Sass, you know, this is no time to be doing this now. Uh, but clearly he's, he's, he's saying this privately, and now it's gotten out. David, um, Joe Biden has had sort of a lukewarm relationship with his former boss, although President, uh, former President Obama is going to campaign for him in Philadelphia. Yeah, well... Uh Biden, frankly, doesn't need President Obama right now. He's doing very well. We just saw him on your show. He seems very energized. He's hitting the topics that the battleground states like Michigan care about, like health care, talking about how Republicans all over the country have endorsed him. So he's really hit his stride right now. But Obama, of course, always can help. He remains a popular ex-president. I just want to comment on Ben Sass's comments. The senator's comments were very incisive, you, and he was very courageous to say these things about Trump. But you have to wonder, why did he wait until now to do it? David DeFory and Byron York, thank you both. Thank you.